about the tabernacle from today on for next several weeks and also one of these Saturdays we will be going to Lancaster as a church and we will see the real life-size tabernacle it's an hour and a half from here and we will see the life-size tabernacle so what is this tabernacle why did God give this what is the purpose we're going to study all these truths in detail and see how there is gospel in this ordinary looking piece of furniture or tent okay so before we listen to the word of God I want you to look at this video uh, you can turn the lights off if you can please um, and you can hear the verses being read that is King James uh, you can follow if you have your Bible all right let's watch the video a sacred chest three and three quarter feet long two and a quarter feet wide and two and a quarter feet high overlaid inside and outside with pure gold and put a molding of gold all around it cast four wings of gold for it and attach them to its four feet two wings on each side make poles from acacia wood and overlay them with gold fit the poles into the wings at the sides of the ark to carry it these carrying poles must never be taken from the wings they are to be left there permanently when the ark is finished place inside it the stone tablets inscribed with the terms of the covenant which i will give to you make the ark's cover the place of atonement out of pure gold it must be three and three quarter feet long and two and a quarter feet wide then used hammered gold to make two cherubim and place them at the two ends of the atonement cover. Attach the cherubim to each end of the atonement cover, making it all one piece. The cherubim will face each other, looking down on the atonement cover with their wings spread out above it. Place inside the ark the stone tablets inscribed with the terms of the covenant, which I will give to you. Then put the atonement cover on top of the ark. I will meet with you there and talk to you from above the atonement cover between the gold cherubim that hover over the Ark of the Covenant. From there, I will give you my commands for the people of Israel. Loving Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning. Thank you for all those who really work behind this to give us a technology to understand what great pattern you gave to the people of Israel that day in that wilderness. Lord, we want to study thy word and know your heart, the purpose for which you gave it to the people. And Lord, you handed it down to us in thy word. And we want to learn from this and know and grow in thy knowledge. Thank you, dear Lord, for this privilege. I'm unworthy before you. I ask you to forgive me and teach us thy word from thy throne. We pray with thanksgiving in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Book of Exodus chapter 25 onwards is starting a new history, new chapter in the life of Israel. Until that time, the story was different. In, Ex in Leviticus chapter 17, you hear that the people used to offer sacrifices. Abraham offered sacrifice. But what the sacrifices did was, those sacrifices were offered by the elder in the family. God changed the pattern and said, no, no, no. Now you're going to have a tabernacle. You must come and worship me there. So what we're going to do is, we're going to see what this tabernacle is all about. Why did God give this tabernacle to the people? What are the things involved in the tabernacle? Every thing, every stick, every cloth, every fabric, whatever you look at, 
will show you Jesus Christ. I was, uh, I was in my seventh grade, I believe, and uh, one day a preacher came to our church and then he said, the tabernacle shows Jesus. And I argued with him. I said, you are a moron. How can there be Jesus in that tabernacle? I argued with him. I said, you're wrong. When I was born again, and I started learning the word, I said, how sorry I, I was that I told that preacher, I said, I'm sorry. What you said is right. And this is one of the greatest portions in the scripture that changed the history of Israel. Today we are going to start looking at the tabernacle. I want to describe to you the tabernacle and then go into three important things in today's message. I want you to look at the picture of the tabernacle. On the screen you find this tabernacle. What you see here is, this is just an ordinary piece of curtains all around. I picked up this picture from the Google. You see, there are some posts and there's a huge courtyard which is made up. And this courtyard, you can see the measurement here, it's 100 cubits. On the top left, I don't want to go to the speaker because I don't have the laser. On the top left, you find 100 cubits. That's the length. If you see, the width is 50 cubits. And in the middle you find a colored entrance. You see all over, there's no other place that you can enter this, though it is made up of cloth, white cloth, but there's only one entrance here. You see the direction that you find, that is facing east, that, that's facing west, the entrance is toward the west. There is a reason why. There is a, the white cloth all around. You may say, why is there white cloth? Why can't it be some other color? We'll come to that point. Why is it white? Then, you find it is all enclosed everywhere. There are posts at every spot. And then there is one entrance. The first article that you find is called the brazen altar. Now, before we go to the individual items, I want to tell you there are three compartments in a tabernacle. You find the outer court. You see? The whole enclosed area that's called the outer court. In the outer, after the outer court, there is a structure, a house like a structure. That is called the holy place and the holy of holies that is made up of wood that's made up of wood that has a partition called the veil you see right after that in that building you find there is a veil this building this wooden structure it is divided into two parts as Holy of Holies and the Holy Place. Holy Place, and there is a veil, and there is a Holy of Holies. The Holy of the Holies is the place where only one man in the whole world can enter. He is the High Priest. Once a year. So that is the Holy of Holies. Then, in the Holy Place, all the priests they come and do the ministry. There are three articles in that place. Now, as you come from the outside, once you make the entrance, the first thing that you find is the brazen altar. Okay? We'll go into detail about what is what. It's a brazen altar. After the brazen altar, you have a huge uh, bowl which has water in it. I want to remind you one thing. For everything, God gave measurements. Every beam, every frame, the length of a curtain, He gave measurements for everything, 
but the only item in the whole tabernacle that does not have measurements is the laver the big basin in which there is water there's no measurement in that then as you cross the brazen altar you go to the laver after anybody can go all the Israelites can go only up to the outer court do you get it it's only up to the outer court but the priests only can enter the holy place to be a priest you must be born in the family of Levi you are the only people the priests only can enter into that place there there are three articles one is the altar of incense the second one is called the table of shoe bread and the third one is called the golden lampstand everything in this has a meaning has a purpose when you cross the veil inside is the ark of the covenant this ark of the covenant is what we're going to look at today there are three things we will study today number one we will study a little bit about the tabernacle number two we will study about the most holy place and we will also study about the ark of the covenant uh, I want you to take your eyes off the uh, screen and follow the scripture now Exodus chapter 25 and verse 3 has a key you know in the uh, when you do the map you have a key right you call the legend the legend has some codes and they have a meaning last night I was trying to uh, plan uh, the layout of this uh, place of this gymnasium I, I put three options uh, where the plug should be where the table should be you know that gave a lot of clarity so that saved a lot of time you know where the plug should be where the table you see this one table there there's one table there there uh, you know power strips there and so that way everything I, I, I put a triangle I put a triangle for a table you know triangle for a power outlet circle for a table so then I was remembering okay the word of God also, also has such kind of thing now what we will do now is we will see what are the articles that God said you need to use and what is the meaning of each of them I don't know if you have a pen with you or if you want to take notes you can take notes look at chapter 25 and verse 3 these are the offerings you are to receive from them gold silver and bronze blue and purple and scarlet yarn and fine linen goat hair ram skins dyed red and hides of sea cows acacia wood olive oil for the light spices for the anointing oil and for the fragrant incense and onyx stones and other gems to be mounted on the ephod and the breastplate now I want you to look at this look at number one gold okay, can you turn the volume down a little bit yeah that's better that's better thank you can you hear me can you hear me okay good now gold why is there gold here because gold is a symbol of divinity Godhead gold is a symbol of divinity silver is a symbol of redemption when you pay a price when you want to what what happened to Jesus he was sold for 30 pieces of silver it was silver when you want to buy something you always paid silver next bronze remember bronze is always a symbol of judgment you remember that brazen serpent the bronze serpent that Moses said put the serpent on the what is that bronze bronze is a symbol of judgment now look at this blue blue is symbol of heavenly sky is blue that talks about heavenly things purple a symbol of royalty purple you see any any time you use purple it kind of looks very royal any king's dress you find there will be purple what was uh, in the scripture you find during the time of Jesus' crucifixion whatever colors you find here 
Jesus was made to wear those colors. Purple. His blood became, it was red. The dress he wore, it was what? Linen. You see, blue, purple, scarlet yarn. Scarlet is a red, deep, richer, blood red. Then you have linen, fine linen. Linen in the word of God indicates a righteousness. Now, I don't want you to go to the uh, picture, but I want you to remember. There was a huge courtyard and it was all white curtains. Is it not? It is righteousness. That's why man cannot jump over that and enter into that outer court. In order to come into that place, there's only one way and that is Jesus Christ. That's why there is only one door. There is only one gate through which one can enter. You cannot jump over because the righteousness of God is so demanding. You see, are you trying to compare our lives and see how true that is when Jesus, God gave this to Moses. The way God gave this to Moses is, let's finish off this and come back and talk about God and Moses. Then, you find goat hair. How would you get a goat hair without killing the goat? If you need goat hair, you need to kill that goat. Then, you need ram skins. You cannot get a ram skin without killing that ram. Then, you find uh, uh, acacia, uh, hides of sea cows. Yes, this hide is again a skin. In order to get a skin, you need to kill that. Acacia wood. I want you to remember that acacia wood has a very powerful prominence in the word of God. How does an acacia wood look like? I want you to look at the screen. Look at the screen and you will know what an acacia wood looks like. You will be surprised. Acacia wood has thorns in it. Acacia wood has thorns in it. Wood is a symbol of the humanity. Wood is symbol of humanity. Gold is symbol of divinity. And here you find this wood has thorns. When Jesus Christ came into this world, his life was not comfortable. At every place he was insulted. His own people rejected him. Can there be something good that come, can come out of Nazareth? People said. People said, stone him. The kind of life Jesus had to lead was, he had to keep proving himself. At last, he was innocent, but still he was crucified. Acacia Wood talks about the humanity of Jesus Christ. Then go on, you find olive oil. In order to get oil, you have to crush olives. You have to crush them. What happened to Jesus Christ? He was crushed for our sake and also remember acacia wood acacia wood is uh, can you go to that other picture of acacia uh, tree I want you to look at the picture of an acacia tree this is the picture of an acacia tree usually this is found in dry places in dry places turn with me to book of Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 2 Book of Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 2. He grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a root out of dry ground. He grew up like a root out of a dry ground. That talks about the dryness, the kind of life Jesus had to live on this earth. The God who, that's the be beautiful song that we sang, said, you came from heaven to the earth, earth to the cross, cross to the grave. That's the kind of uh, dissension that Jesus was ready to take. Please remember that Jesus made that great sacrifice. Like an olive oil, it was, he was crushed. He, wa he came out of a root of a dry ground. And spices for the anointing oil. In Exodus chapter 30, I want you to go home and look at this. See, you, you'll be learning a lot of, lot of, uh, 
you mean to say, not so very easily understandable stuff because they look so dry. They look so dry. But if you want to know what, how spices are made, for even for your perfume, right? Even for your perfume. How does a perfume come? You need to, tell me, if you want a rose uh, cologne, how many roses do you need to crush to get that smell? In Exodus chapter 30, you hear about multiple types of things that are crushed to give the anointing spices. And then you find uh, onyx stones. These are not the stones which are found on the uh, superficial. They have to go deep, dig deep. They are precious ones. It, you have to pay a price. Why is, it, why is it that gold is so expensive? It is because it is rare. It is found in some of the remotest places. You have to pay a big price to get that gold. People go all the way to, say, Congo in Africa, and there the gold mines. Do you think it's easy to... Why is to just think about this. Why is gold so precious? You have to pay a price. Onyx stones, they are so precious. It's not so easy to get them. And then you find other gems to be mounted on the ephod. See, gems, these are all precious stones. At every step you see the sacrifice of God. Sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And this is what God said to Moses. Moses, I want you to prepare this. Okay? Uh, if Moses was living during this time, I am sure he went to God with an iPad fully charged, with extra batteries, and then said, Lord, all right, I'll take notes. Come on, let me dictate. Uh, dictate and I'll take it notes. It didn't happen. You find from Exodus chapter 25. Exodus chapter 24, you find Moses went on to the mountain. And from 25, God started speaking. And he had to remember every measurement. And that was given by God himself. I want to show you three verses. Exodus chapter 25 and verse 9. Make this tabernacle and all its furnishings exactly like the pattern I will show you. Hear me? Yes? Exactly like I will show you. The pattern. Who gave the pattern? God gave the pattern. What is the meaning of pattern? It's a model. Yeah? I was... When, when you want to do something, you want to plan something. And God said, this is the plan. This is the pattern in which you must uh, observe these things, Moses. You must do th these things in this pattern. And again, you also find the same... Same thing again, God tells him in uh, verse 40. Verse 40, see that you make them according to the pattern shown you on the mountain. Chapter 26, verse uh, uh, 30 again, he says, set up the tabernacle according to the plan shown you on the mountain. Mean to say, Moses, you cannot use your brain. You cannot use your intelligence to make what God has designed. You find a simple thing on the Facebook usually, right? This is what the Titanic... What happened to Titanic and what happened to Noah's Ark? What was the problem? How the... It withstood lashing for 40 days and 40 nights. How did they survive? The design was given by God. And here it is human design. One lesson I learned from this is never try to do God's ways, God's things in human ways. God is giving caution here and said, Moses, do it as I said, Moses. My pattern. My pattern. I gave you that pattern. Follow it and do it exactly like the way I told you. Tabernacle. Why did God give this tabernacle? You find the answer in verse 8. Exodus chapter 25 and verse 8. Then have them make a sanctuary for me and I will dwell among them. God says, Moses, I want to live with you guys. I want to live with you. What kind of a person would come and tell these guys, 
I want to live with you. These Israelites, if you see the story before chapter 25 in Exodus, you know what they were known for? And later also, they were known for murmuring. They said, this is not right. This is the problem. There, when all, the whole 40 years, they murmured. But did God judge them? Did God punish them? At times, yes. But did God say, I won't stay with these fellows? No. He said, make a tabernacle, Moses, and I will dwell among you. My dear brother, my dear sister, our God is the same God. We are probably worse than those Israelites. But God still says, I will live among you. The difference about between the Israelites and us is, God says to Moses, I will dwell among you. But with you and me, Jesus Christ says, I will live in you. World of difference. It says, I will live among them, among you. But God says, but Jesus said, what happened on the day of Pentecost? When you receive Jesus Christ, what happens? Does he come and sit beside you? He comes into you. So that's the difference. So what we see, what, what pattern God gave to Moses was. And what happened further later is much more in our lives to a greater degree that we find here. God wants to dwell with man. It's right from the beginning. Th tell me about something. Think about this. We did a series on it all began in the garden, right? So you find God made man. Why does he need to make a man? Right? Was there a rule? God should make a man. Was there any law? No. Why did he do that? Where was he living? He was living among the angels. His worship day and night. There is a great worship going on in the heaven. He can, I mean, uh, I think, you know, uh, remember we, in India we used to play marbles? Yeah? God can play marbles with earth, Pluto, you know? I mean, they're so small for him. But God says, I want to make man. Why? There's only one theme. Right from the beginning of Genesis all the way to Revelation, you'll find one theme. That is, God wants to live with human beings. He wants to live with you. Revelation chapter 21 and verse 3. Revelation chapter 21, verse 3. This is at the time when the earth is going to pass away and in the new heaven and new earth, this is what's going to happen. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Now the dwelling of God is with men and he will live with them. They will be his people and God himself will be with them and be their God. First Thessalonians chapter 4. First Thessalonians chapter 4. Talking about people who die in Jesus Christ. What happens? He says, uh, verse 17, After that we who, First uh, Thessalonians 4, 17, After that we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord for ever. It's God's desire that he wants to live with man. You know, the human desire is, I want to go up to a bigger standard of life. Am I right? Our, our aim will be always to move up to a higher standard of life. But what God is saying is, I want to step down. I want to come down and live with you people. That's the kind of God we have. That's where the humility of God comes into picture. That's when... Where the tabernacle, the reason why God gave the tabernacle was for that God may live with man. Number two, in the tabernacle, we look at the most holy place. Let's go to that picture again. The most holy place. I want you to look at the picture and go into the third compartment. Third compartment. That is the holy of holies. That's the most holy place. 
uh, I don't have time but I want you to because now with this series starting I, I encourage you to spend more time in the word of God and start studying this please remember the holy of holies holy of holies if you see this 10 cubits here right on the right you see that's 10 cubits if you look at this 10 cubits here you see 10 cubits here so the width is 10 cubits the length is 10 cubits and if you go and study how tall these frames were the frames you see the frames yeah those frames they are also 10 cubits length is 10 cubits breadth is 10 cubits height is 10 cubits you know what that talks about perfect it's a perfect cube length is the same breadth is the same and height is the same that talks about perfection the only person who can say I am perfect is God Paul says you need to be perfect because our God is perfect he says I am holy therefore you be holy you want to know what happened this perfection it transports even into the future Revelation chapter 21 and verse 16 Revelation chapter 21 and verse 16 the city was laid out this is the new Jerusalem that's coming in the future the city was laid out like a square as long as it was wide he measured the city with the rod and found it to be 12,000 stadia in length and as wide and as high as it is long same measurements in any way you look at perfect you see and in that perfect place is the ark of the covenant now tell me something I don't know if there is any design engineer here if you really wanted to start a description of a design would you start go back uh, can you minimize it minimize it minimize it no R reduce that size of oh, oh, yeah would you start if you want to start a design would you start with the courtyard or would you start with the thing that is in that most holy place would anybody start a description and give a design with something that is in the most holy place and build the design from inside out would anybody do that this is what God is doing the first article that was mentioned that is mentioned in the scripture is the Ark of the Covenant why Ark of the Covenant Exodus 25 verse 21 22 verse 22 place uh, there above the cover between the two cherubim that are over the ark of the testimony I will meet with you and give you all my commands for the Israelites I will meet with you God said I will meet with you I will meet with you look at this another thought that is where God lives most holy place how far is it from the entrance it is too far right if you have to reach the most holy place you have to come through this door only and cross all these articles and reach that most holy place for the Israelites there was only one man who had an access when Jesus died on the cross you remember the veil tore it means everybody has that access everybody has that access 
Let's talk about the Ark of the Covenant. How is this Ark of the Covenant made? You saw the video. It is actually made of acacia wood. It's actually an ordinary box. Acacia wood overlaid with gold. Acacia wood overlaid with gold. Wood talks about humanity. Gold talks about divinity. Jesus was 100% man and 100% God. Did he have hunger? Yes. Did he thirst? Yes. Did he cry? Yes. Did he sing? Yes. Did he make fish fry? Yes. Did he walk with the people? Yes. Was he born in a human flesh? Yes. Was he God? Yes. He told the people, I am God. And they said, that's why we, that's why we were stoning you. He was 100% God and 100% man. You see, God is giving this picture to Moses years apart and telling him, Moses, all that is me. All that is me. So God is trying to tell Moses to build that ark of the covenant. What is this ark of the covenant? It's wood overlaid with gold. It's a box. Two and a half cubits long. Cubit and a half height. And cubit and a half wide. So this is a box overlaid with gold. Some rings made so that you put some sticks through that and you can pick them up and walk. I want to remind you there was one man called Uzziah. You find this man's story in the Kings. They were taking this Ark of the Covenant on a bullock cart and the bullock stumbled and it was about to trip and fall. And this man was riding that bullock cart. Because it was about to trip and fall. You know what this man did? Like any of us would do. He touched the ark. Spot dead. He touched the ark of God. And he died on the spot. God killed him. You see how, how precious it is. How holy it is. I want to tell you how holy this Ark of the Covenant is. How holy this Ark of the Covenant is. The value of the Ark is. Remember this man. Uh, Solomon. He married a lot of women. He married a lot of women. And one of the girls he married was the Pharaoh's daughter. He married Pharaoh's daughter. And. Because he cannot accommodate all his wives in the same, uh, you know, palace. He is thousand. So he married this girl from Pharaoh's family. And when he married this girl from Pharaoh's family, he did not allow this girl to live in Zion. You know why? The Bible says he did not allow this girl to live in Zion. Uh, even in those mistakes, he was a little cautious, right? Some, some of us are like that. Yeah, uh, I know one man who would not go to a cinema on Wednesday or Thursday. Believer. Yeah, he went to a cinema hall and looked at another believer coming from the other side. Yeah, in the cinema hall. And you know, ob obviously the moment you see a believer, what do you say? In the cinema, uh, you know, uh, as they are entering, this believer saw another believer and said, Praise the Lord, brother. <laughs> And that man also said, praise the Lord. So you can't get away from that. This man doesn't go to movies on Wednesdays or Thursdays. You ask why? He says, if you go on Tuesday or Monday, that is close to the previous Sunday. If you go to a movie on Friday or Saturday, it is close to the next Sunday. You see, even in making mistakes, people are a little cautious. This man, Solomon, he married this girl. First of all, he's not supposed to marry her. He married her. And what he did was, he got this girl... Not to go into Zion. You find this in Second Chronicles eight eleven. That's Second Chronicles eight eleven. You'll find the reason why he did not allow this girl to go into that city. He said, "This girl 
Though I married her, she is my wife. I cannot allow her to go into this Zion. Reason? Solomon brought Pharaoh's daughter up from the city of David to the palace. He had built for her. For he said, my wife must not live in the palace of the David king of Israel. Because the places, the ark of the Lord has entered our holy. Even that place where this ark was, he said, don't let that girl get into that city. Pull her out from there. Why? That ark made its place in that town. And he said, this girl cannot go there. You see how precious it is? Solomon became king. He was killing people one after another. His daddy told him, Solomon, the first thing Solomon, uh, David told Solomon was, Solomon, you need to eliminate some fellows. They did some harm to me. Solomon's life began with bloodshed. You study this, you find it. And then here in this place, there was his brother called Adonijah. Adonijah had rebelled against his daddy. And while he was still alive, and while David was still alive, he proclaimed himself as the king. And there, so to anoint him as a king, you need a priest. So the man who anointed him is called Abiathar. So time came for Dave, Solomon to kill Abiathar. He called Abiathar and said, Abiathar, I won't kill you. I won't. Why? Why won't you kill? You know the answer he gave? Because you carried the Ark of the Covenant. You carried the Ark of the Covenant. That's why I spare your life. You see how precious this Ark of the Covenant is. No unholy thing can go there. Somebody who carried it, his life was spared, though he rebelled against the king. Only reason is, it was holy. And that is in the most holy place. The way it is built is, wood and gold. Okay, there are two more things you need to remember. As you saw in that video, in that box, there are three things. You find this in Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 4. There are three things. Number one is the tablets of stone that God gave to Moses and said, these are the Ten Commandments. Write them down and put them in that box. The second one is the pot of manna. They used to eat manna every day. A pot of manna in it. And Aaron's rod blossomed. Do you remember that? Aaron's rod blossomed. And that rod was put in that box. There are three articles. What is the meaning of these three? For everything here is a meaning, right? What is these three things? Number one, the only things, remember this, remember this. The only thing that is written by God or God made in the whole tabernacle, Everything else is man-made. According to the pattern of God, everything else, else is man-made, but the only thing that is written by God is the Ten Commandments. That's the holiness of God. Number one. Number two. The pot of manna. It talks about bread of life. Still, John chapter 10. I am the bread of life. He is still the source of our life. Aaron's rod blossoming a symbol of the resurrection a dry wooden stick blossoms how? it is because there's life in it so there you find everything that you talk about in, there is about Jesus Christ and then you need to remember this there's another important thing I told you two things number one is three things that are in that article in that box and the most important thing is that is not an open box. That box is covered. And that covering is called the mercy seat. It's called the mercy seat. Just think about this. This is a box. And inside is the holiness of God. The laws. Right? 
the law of God is there but on the top there is a covering and that is called the mercy seat why is it called mercy seat because just imagine if the lid was open you know what would be coming out of that the law of God man cannot stand that law of God he cannot abide he cannot fulfill till death can you just imagine a, a document which was written on the mountain some thousands of years ago and there have been, there, there been people in all generations all over the world and not a single individual can stand before God and say I have fulfilled the Ten Commandments nobody but God says I know I know your problem I know you cannot fulfill that therefore I'm going to put a mercy seat and God says I will meet you there that is the mercy of God he says I know you cannot stand the law but I will show my mercy to you I want to tell you this morning dear brothers and sisters in the whole design in the Ark of the Covenant in the tabernacle you know what that item in the most holy place the Ark of the Covenant in such a such a precious place God began with Ark of the Covenant you know what it means even if you forget the whole thing it's okay but this is one thing you need to remember God began with himself in the description of the tabernacle God began with himself that is how the pattern of God is Genesis 1 1 in the beginning God John chapter 1 verse 1 in the beginning was the word Matthew chapter 6 verse 9 when Jesus was teaching the Lord's Prayer our Father who art in heaven who is first God is first what do you learn from this Ark of the Covenant though we are say though we are learning some historical things they have an application to our lives today so what do you learn from this is when God himself is giving himself the priority how much more you and I make him number one if God says I'm number one God began with himself he should be number one in our lives the first commandment in the Ten Commandments is thou shalt have no other God beside me God is number one it's my desire that International Outreach Church every family lives a life we are not perfect we fail we keep falling but our goal is Lord you are my number one people should be able to say hey he loves his God so much he loves his God that's a testimony that we want to carry I love my God because anything that you love more than God is an idol nothing should take God's place just think about this when God says I begin with myself we need to say Lord I want to begin with you we start our day with our life with God we start our see when you, when you get a new job when you move to a new place when you start your new day in the morning what do you do first thing you pray who do you pray to God why I'm telling you yesterday uh, we're coming back home and we stopped at uh, Wawa there's a new Wawa which is open 10 days free coffee you want to go there have enjoy it I wanted to go inside I stood there outside there was one Afro-American man his name was Tony I stood there talking to this man and he told me something I was so thrilled I said Tony uh, he talked about slowly 
two minutes into the talk he started up talking about God he start, uh, started talking about church I said I got it I gave him a card wrote down my number and said hey Tony come to my church he said no I, I, I do some classes training on Sunday morning I said I'll be done in uh, six weeks so after six weeks I'll come I said Tony I'll take you for lunch tomorrow on Monday come come to church and see me we'll go for lunch and this man told me something he saw God's not dead he is not really dead people think he's dead people live as if he's dead you know what he said it's so funny even atheist an atheist who doesn't believe in God when he sneezes what does he say does he talk, does he talk about God even in an ordinary sneeze you cannot bypass God may God be number one